Hi, we're here at EBA Day TV, and I'm talking with Sean Fitzgerald of Centennial. Now, I know this is EBA Day, this is a banking conference, but we were having a bit of a conversation about the behavior of corporates, and you guys work a lot with SEPA migration for, for corporates, and you mentioned that Belgium and the Benelux countries are a bit of a microcosm for what's going on in the industry as a whole. Can you go into a bit more detail about that? Yeah, we're seeing... Um different uh, levels of activity in, the, in, the, in different countries. Belgium uh, has moved uh, first and fastest, you might say, around uh, the migration for the corporates uh, in, in SEPA. And that's been driven by a particular issue with the business-to-business -business revocability um, uh, scheme in Belgium that the, 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 the creditors wanted to get across to, to SEPA sooner rather than later. Consequently, most activity and most migrations have taken place in Belgium. Yeah, so Belgium is, uh, is, is leading the charge here. Uh, we're um, working closely with ING to provide the services for ING to, uh, to manage their corporates across uh, in, the, in the SEPA space in Belgium yeah, and, and, and more generally uh, through Europe. The, um, it is unquestionably uh, a learning ground, I think, for everybody, for the banks, uh, for the, the system providers, uh, for the corporates, and for the ERP accounting package you know, kind of providers as well. Uh, we're seeing the, um, probably on a local basis, behavior that's probably going to be replicated uh, through Europe, uh, for the corporates, for the banks, and also for the system service providers. Uh, the corporates um, are starting to understand I mean, the complexity uh, of the problem, uh, the challenge that they face to, uh, to migrate to SEPA and also with SEPA on an ongoing basis as well, but also with the opportunities around SEPA. So we're seeing behaviours uh, which are important for all the players in this space. So we're seeing some corporates consolidating their financial flows um, into one bank where previously they have been slip, split between several banks. We're seeing corporates moving the origination of their transactions into Belgium from other countries. That, that, that's quite significant. Uh, the, the reasons for that are some project related and some cost related. Do you think there's a lot of cross border payments from, you know, that originate from Belgium, just for the nature of the... No, it's, it's not necessarily, but it's the, it's, it's the dimension of SEPA that allows cross-border payments to be originated in Belgium because all the other banks are, are reachable uh, at, at this point in time in terms of I mean, the current accounts are not going to afford the direct debits. So it's that reachability which gives some corporates with business activities that span through several countries. You know, they, they see that opportunity now. So that's an important dimension. It's very important because that, that, that behavior is important for banks because it has impacts obviously on, uh, on financial flows uh, on, uh, on an interbank basis within a country but also in a, in a European context as well. So we can expect to see that type of behavior replicated on, on, on a larger scale you know, across Europe with significant implications. Yeah, it seems like now that we have SEPA end dates, corporates uh, have, have woken up to uh, the fact they need to migrate to SEPA and some of the benefits of SEPA. So what, what are we seeing corporates demand from, the, from their banking uh, partners? Um, for, first of all, as with any problem, you have to define the problem. You know? Uh, what's happening uh, is that they are they're understanding the various dimensions to the problem kind of for the corporate. Primarily revolves around uh, transactions and mandates and the communication and document handling for certain uh, aspects of some schemes, business to business in particular, around, uh, around documents and mandate management. But there will be other uh, flavors of SEPA direct debits, you know, kind of fixed and once off, which will, uh, will also kind of have, have relevance here too. So it's primarily around transaction handling, transaction enrichment and transaction translation. And then for the mandates, it's mandate management. And then on an ongoing basis, the, uh, the creation, storage and maintenance of the mandates is, is going to be an issue for the corporates. And then communication and document handling. They're, they're, they're the problems, they're the dimensions of the problem for the corporates. And it's complex. Now, the corporates uh, view, and it's, 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 it's interesting how this is playing out now because all those various parts of that, of that problem, as I've described, you know, have to be solved by somebody. So is it going to be the corporate who solves the problem? And all of the problem, is it going to be the uh, ERP system vendor uh, or the accounting package provider? Uh, or is it going to be the bank? 
And interestingly, we're starting to see the, the dust settle there on who's going to do what here, you know, and, and who's motivated to do what you know, in, in, in this particular space. ERP system vendors you know, will solve one part of that problem, potentially, you know, and that's the transaction creation part of it from the internal billing system in the ERP system. Uh, but the other parts of it, they won't do. You know, and, uh, uh, for example, 20% of our you know, customer base you know, at the moment for SEPA you know, is, uh, is uh, our customers of one of the large you know, leading system providers, like the ERP system vendors like in Europe at the moment. And we will announce a partnership to provide all the dimensions to the service that I've just described to the other leading player in Europe um, very soon. I want to bring the discussion back to banks. Um, you, you guys have recently signed big deals with AIB and commerce banks. Um, how are banks responding uh, to, to the, the changing marketplace and, and the needs of corporates? So it, it, it's a question of, of the ownership of the parts of the problem and who's motivated to, to take ownership. As I said, the ERP system provider is going to won't be doing it, but the banks are certainly motivated and incentivized here to unburden the creditors. And more importantly, the creditors expect to be unburdened. The creditors have the financial flows. You know, they have a lot of uh, business and other business uh, dimensions to the relationship with the bank, such as the related to the financial flows. There's the lending, there's the cash management, and there's, there's the treasury. So banks have somewhat moved from an opportunist view of uh, SEPA to not necessarily a defensive view, but more certainly protecting the existing relationships that they have with the creditors. And the creditors expect that you know, of the banks. And, and, and that's an aspect um, which has become very obvious in Belgium, you know, and it does challenge the beliefs of, of uh, some players and banks in the space that it's not the bank's problem, you know, that they will just receive the, the, the appropriate file formats in at the appropriate point in time, and, and, and apart from that, it's, it's, uh, it's, the, it's, 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 it's an issue. For, it's, it's a traditional legacy approach to how direct debits were handled in the legacy scheme, issued the origination authority, and the, the, the full ownership of the of the of the, of the processes around. I mean, the, it's the now a brave new SEPA world. <laughs> it's a brave new world, absolutely, with some threats there because um, they, you know, there are players out there and banks who are now creating and embedding those core services into the offering to uh, take the pain away from the, from the creditors. You know, to ensure that those financial flows I mean, are retained actually in the bank with, with the, the other I mean, opportunities around cross-selling and treasury and, 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 and cash management. So that's how the banks are reacting. It's, it's, it's understanding and defining the service levels you know, that they have to have in place. Uh, and also the, the technical you know, kind of connectivity and the, and the commercial dimensions to that as well. And that's probably been played out, as I said, more so. All the learning has been in the, in the Benelux type countries in the, in the recent past. But it will uh, prove uh, useful and, and relevant to, me to the rest of the, uh, of the uh, European market. The other dimension to the problem for the banks is really the whole migration, mass migration project that the bank has to undergo. There will be you know, hundreds of thousands of corporates, and for some banks, you know, kind of thousands, and for some banks, tens of thousands of corporates migrating in a short period of time. And it's the industrialization of that migration program you know, which, uh, which needs to be addressed uh, in, in the bank. And, and we're seeing several banks now with their, their project plans crystallizing now, with double digit numbers in terms of budgets and millions you know, to, to, to solve that problem you know, kind of internally in the bank. That's the migration program. And those programs um, are, are reasonably um, advanced in terms of I mean, the, I mean, the planning phase. Again, we're seeing that happening in the markets that are most active, you know, up in the Benelux countries. But again, uh, we will see a replication of that effect, you know, in, uh, in other banks uh, kind of through Europe. And already we're starting to see the, uh, the signs of that.